Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of my channel, The Smoking Beard Barbecue. Today, I will be doing a Thanksgiving special. I am going to show you guys uh, from beginning to end how to actually brine and smoke a turkey for this, the upcoming season of Thanksgiving. Now, usually, what you want to do is you want to go into, let's say, uh, a search engine and look for your favorite brines or easy brines. What I was able to find as at Costco. I was able to find a already pre-mixed turkey brine. This is what I'm going to be using. If you do not have a Costco or you don't want to buy this, I found this to be a lot cheaper. It was about $6 for the bottle. Uh, uh, way less cheaper than buying all the ingredients individually. If you're the type that wants certain ingredients in your brine, this is basically like a seasoning. Um, you can do that. You can follow the steps. I just have this one already pre-made. So I'll take you through the steps of how to brine your turkey in your at home, and then we'll go over and uh, smoke it in the smoker, and at the end we'll we'll take have a taste test. All right, so stay tuned. So the first thing I wanted to do is go over some of the things that I have uh, pre-prepared for you guys before I started shooting. What I have here is about a gallon's worth of water. The what I'm going to do with this water, I have already pre-measured. Through the uh, Costco turkey brine, I pre-measured two cups worth of uh, brining, I guess, um, goodness in here. So what I'm gonna do with this now is I'm actually gonna uh, throw this in here and I'm gonna boil this. I'm gonna um, bring it to a boil so that um, all the the flavors can start going into the water. So the first things first, whether you're gonna use the Costco brine or you're gonna use your own brine, um, the first thing you want to do is actually pour this in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to boil this and then afterwards I'll show you what to do. So uh, just keep posted. So while my water is uh, getting nice and hot and starting to boil, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go over some of the, one of the major tips on purchasing a turkey to actually smoke. Or if, if you're going to cook it in the oven or whatever, this also follows for that. If you can, I would recommend that you guys get a turkey that has not been frozen. This is a fresh turkey that I got from Costco. Um, if, if it's not frozen, it'll reduce the amount of time it takes you to actually get it prepared. You can do the same thing with a frozen turkey, but what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to buy the turkey frozen, put it in your, um, in your refrigerator for a couple of days so it can thaw out. You don't just let it thaw out at room temperature, it has to be in the refrigerator. So that does take a, a day or two to do. So if, if ever possible, try and get a, a non-frozen turkey. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to get this turkey out of, the, out of the wrap and I'm going to get it prepared so that we can actually put it into our brine bag and uh, have it sit overnight. All right, so at this point, I, uh, I boiled my, my brine mixture on my stove top. And right now what I'm letting it do is I'm letting it cool off. You don't want to use this brine the way it is right now because of the simple fact that if you pour this brine over your turkey and it's at this temperature, it'll start to cook it and that's not what you want. So you want this brine to, to come back down to room temperature so that you can actually stick it uh, into your turkey and uh, let it do its magic. So now it's uh, sit and wait. You can let it uh, cool off at room temperature or if you want to put it in the refrigerator or in the freezer and let it cool off faster if you're in a hurry. That's what you can do. But for right now, um, this is the step. This In this step of the process, you just need to let it cool, cool off so it doesn't cook your turkey when you actually stick it in there. All right, so uh, what, what I just did off camera right now is I actually let the, the brining uh, mixture cool off. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half. You can put it in the refrigerator. Some people put ice cubes in here to, uh, to try to speed up the process if you're in a, in a bind. But what you want to do is you want to be able to stick your hand in here it'll, and it'll be uh, pretty much room temperature. If it's room temperature, you're good to go. The last thing you want is to have uh, brine that is still hot and when you pour it in here, it's going to start cooking your, your turkey because this turkey is going to go into the refrigerator for about 24 hours. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is you want to get yourself a pot that's big enough that's going to accommodate your actual uh, turkey. I got a very small turkey just uh, just for demonstration purposes. This is about a 12 pound turkey. All right. What I wanted to do is I also wanted to um, put some type of plastic over it so I can seal it. What I ended up using for this is literally a oven bags for turkeys, right? The turkey size oven bags. 
What I like about this Reynolds Kitchen oven bags is that it comes with everything that you need, uh, including the little, the little um, ties that go along with it. And this is going to be very helpful because if you notice, my uh, pot is not tall enough, so I'm going to need to be able to squeeze it all the way up so that uh, it brines all the way to the top. One last thing I like to do to my brine before I actually put it in is I actually like to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. This is about two cups worth of apple cider vinegar and uh, what I'm going to actually do is I bought this at Walmart. I mean it's a very generic brand. It's Walmart. You can find it anywhere. Apple cider vinegar. Uh, what you want to do is you want to mix it into your mix and that will help in case that you have, if you, don't, if you didn't make enough, this should be enough for about a 15 to 20 pound turkey but just in case you can throw that in there and it will actually add a little bit more to your actual uh, brine. So, without further ado, I, what I did is I actually put my turkey facing down. I got it out of the bag, of the, the one that it came packaged with. I rinsed it. There's some stuff in the inside that you want to get out. So, make sure you get all of that going. Um, and I let it dry out a little bit. Okay. So, all this is, is I'm basically going to pour the, the brine in here and then afterwards I'm just going to close it up and let it sit overnight. So first things first I'm going to add a little bit of this mixture that's already in here to make room for my apple cider vinegar. I like to go into the cavities, the inside, the outside, you want to try to get everywhere. You have a lot of good stuff on the bottom. Make sure you, you don't forget to scrape the bottom of your of your brine because that's where all the all, all the, the good stuff is. So at this point I have enough room. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in my apple cider vinegar to mix that in a little bit. And I'll go ahead and I'll add some more some of the rest of uh, remaining brine that was on the other bowl. Now the, these are, uh, I guess you would consider them like fancy brines. Really, if you just want to make, the whole point of a brine is to actually make your chicken juicy. Now, yes, you want to get some flavor into it and everything, but if you're on a budget and all you can afford is water and kosher salt, then all you need is a gallon of water to, um, to about a cup to two cups worth of, of that salt that you, um, that you end up boiling. Uh, what that salt will do is it will help. It will help with the with the juiciness of the turkey, and it, it won't dry it out as you're smoking it. So yes, this looks nice and all, but this is not. I hate to work, use the word necessary because I like to do it. But if you find yourself in a pinch, this is, this would be a perfect uh, opportunity to to use something like that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm I'm getting the the bag to settle because I, I want to make sure that it gets all the way to the bottom. I'm picking it up. I'm laying it down, and this is why. This is the reason I say that it's it's important for those ties because what's going to happen is I'm going to try to pick it up as much as I can, take the air out, and then I'm going to try to turn it so that everything is kind of like as close to the turkey as possible, something like this. But let me finish putting in the brine, and then we'll go from there. Now, if you see that you're low on brine that you didn't have, you didn't make enough, is don't don't uh, don't worry. All you really have to do is add more uh, cold water afterwards to make up for any brine that you you may be missing. Okay, and as as you can see, it looks like my turkey actually settled down. It's actually um, laying on its uh, on one side instead of upside down, which is perfectly fine. It's not a big deal as long as this brine gets into all the nooks and crannies. I really don't care. To get all that good stuff. Don't be afraid to get your hands in there. This is just seasonings that are coming in. All right. So now that you have your turkey nice and uh, encompassed with all this brine and juicy goodness, the next thing you want to do is you want to try to get as much of the air out as possible so that the brine gets all over the turkey. Like right there it's going above the, the turkey which is what I want. Just pull the air out. Once you pull the air out, you can make like a couple of knots here. Twist it. And then we're going to 
use one of these to actually tie it. as tight as possible the tighter the better so after that I still like to give it a couple of more twists because I don't really trust those ties it's gonna have to resist for about 24 hours in the, in the refrigerator so I have to wanna, I wanna make sure that it stays tied so you got a tie on top of a tie All right, well there you go. You see how now the turkey is now all, uh, the brine is all over the turkey. What I wanna do to, at this point is actually let it sit in the refrigerator for about 24 hours. After the 24 hours, I'll take you to the next steps on the smoking process. But for, uh, for right now, I'm just gonna close it up and I'm gonna put it in my refrigerator. Okay, so at this point in the brining process, we have been uh, at 24 hours with our turkey that has been brining in this, um, this mixture in the refrigerator. So your next step from here is to actually remove the turkey from the brine and dry it off so that we can go to the next step in the smoking process. Okay, so what I did right now is I actually drained the uh, brine from the actual turkey itself. And uh, what you have here is, is a brined turkey. Now the next step in this process is to actually pat it dry uh, so that all the, that moisture from the actual skin uh, is get, gets removed because we are going to put a seasoning over it and we want to make sure that it adheres. So what you want to do at this point is actually take it flip it around and just kind of pat it dry with a paper towel um, I would recommend that you do this and then while this is drying out air drying a little bit I would actually go outside and uh, start uh, setting up your electric smoker or smoker how whatever you're going to be using to smoke while this dries out for a little bit shouldn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes for this uh, to completely dry so that we can go on to the next step in the process. So at this point, this would be a perfect time to let it dry and go and uh, set up your smoker. Okay, so we're back. Uh, what I did off camera right now is I actually let allowed this uh, turkey to kind of dry out a little bit from the brine. While this was uh, drying out, I also went outside and I set up my smoker. Uh, to get it ready to smoke and when I go outside and show you the final stages of, of the smoking setup I'll show you what I did give you some tips and tricks and the next thing that you would want to do after your turkey has been brined over 24 about 24 hours and then on top of that uh, dried out is you actually want to put some type of rub or seasoning over it now the brining itself will allow the turkey to come out juicy and tender the seasoning you put around it will just give it that extra little um, taste to go along with it. Uh, I, I live in Texas. In Texas, I don't know if they have it where you guys are at, but in Texas there's uh, something called the Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. I uh, purchased this uh, Rudy's Turkey Rub. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this all over the turkey before we put it out to smoke. So in order for this rub to adhere, we want to use a little bit of this uh, canola oil just so that it can stick. Alright, a little bit, not too much. just to give it a little shine just so that it can have something to stick to there you go alright once you have that done your next step would be to uh, apply your your uh, rub or any other seasoning that you want to put on top of that uh, on your turkey uh, this would be considered whatever else you would put on like let's say you are doing it normally inside the house Whatever you're doing that way, you can do that, or you can uh, purchase some type of rub that's already pre-made. And uh, you want to apply it, you don't want to go too, too overboard on it. Just enough so that it, it, it catches a turkey, but not necessarily overwhelms it. Because we are going to have, we do have some brine already giving it that extra taste and flavor. Or that tenderness. Just want to get it up in there, up in the armpits. 
all, all along the back side. This is to give it a little bit of a color and a little bit of a taste to the to the actual bark itself. All right, you get the gist. I mean, you put it however, however. Um, if you want to make it more, if you want to have more on it, you put more. If you want to put just enough to give it a little bit of that, just the coloring, that's up to you. It is at this time as well as if you're going to put anything on the inside, a stuffing or anything else that you like to put in there, go ahead and do that at, at this time. This turkey is ready to be uh, smoked. Now my next step, let me get some of this here. The, the last step I like to do before I, uh, I take in a turkey to get smoked is I actually want to make this turkey as comfortable as possible. So I'm going to put the wings, I'm going to use this one so you can see. This, this wing is kind of flapping, you know, you don't want that to be flapping. You want to pick up your turkey and kind of tuck it back. There you go. It's chilling now. Just chillaxing. This one goes back. And there you go. Put a little bit more seasoning there. Also, if your turkey, mine came already pre-tied, but if your turkey did not come pre-tied with your legs here, I would recommend you do that. That uh, try, that eliminates a little bit of the drying out process through the through the cook. All right, let's go put this bad boy into the into the smoker and, and do the final steps, the finishing touches uh, before we actually let it smoke. Alright guys, so we're outside here where I have my smoker, my electric smoker set up. Uh, I want to get I want to go over some of the uh, setups that I have here and uh, maybe they can, you can mirror it so that you have a, a successful smoke. The very first thing you want to make sure that when you have, if you're going to be cooking with the uh, master built electric smoker is you have your drip tray back there, that one right there. Make sure that one's set up. Make sure you have power for your for your smoker. Make sure your smoker's on. Right now it says it's 79 degrees. All right. Um, the next thing you want to make sure to have is your your uh, pan at the bottom, the very bottom down here. This one here is the one that's going to catch the fat, and that's going to actually kick it back to your uh, drip tray over there. Just make sure you put it in correctly because at the very back it has a hole. That hole over there that one drains outside if you put it the wrong way it's not going to be draining the other thing I set up was my um, my my pan my my water pan now in my water pan what I ended up using was some uh, apple cider vinegar and water mixture that'll that'll work and last but not least I know that this smoker comes with a probe a meat probe but I went ahead and I invested in a uh, probe that I could monitor remotely so my very first uh, one that I'm gonna insert here is going to be uh, in the actual breast itself I don't want to go to the point where where it hits a bone so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, kind of feel for it it goes in deep enough but not where the bone is and then my next one which I'm gonna get here This one here, I want to put it inside one of the legs. That's just going to go in there. Try not to get a bone. So you know what? I'm going to go on the inside because the outside will read uh, hotter before the inside is. Okay. So make sure you don't hit a bone. There you go. Um, at this point, I've heard people guesstimate how much time your turkey will take to smoke. Honestly, time is, is I wouldn't say irrelevant, but you can't give it, it's 30 minutes or 40 minutes a pound. What you want to look for is your internal temp. Now for turkey to be considered done, you want to make sure that your breast is at least at 165 and your thigh is at least about 185. So if you hit those ranges, you should be good. So at this point, the only other modification that I did to my, to my smoker is add a cold smoker attachment which I'm turning on right now and as I turn it on I'm going to explain what this does alright so this cold smoker attachment it's been a godsend to me because um, if you have the master built electric smoker I noticed 
after a while that my smoker wasn't really necessarily smoking. It was heating up and it was cooking the meat, but the chip, they weren't uh, smoldering, they weren't catching smoke. So what I did is I was able to invest in this uh, cold smoker attachment. Now this cold smoker attachment, uh, if you can find one, grab it because I, it, they're very hard to come by. But this has been uh, very, very uh, good to me because of the fact that I'm able to uh, bring in the smoke without really having to mess with the, the smoker chip tray that, that it comes with master built. This one by far out, uh, outperforms the one that comes with the actual uh, master built electric smoker and it pumps out a ton of smoke. All right, so at this point, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to turn on my smoker. I turned it off. I'm going to turn it back on. Uh, the cooking temperature for this, you could go about 250. Some have gone 250, 275, and that's what I mean about you don't necessarily know how much time it's going to be because a couple of things factor into your, your actual... Uh, the amount of time it's going to take to cook. One, well, the very, very first factor is going to be the size of your turkey. So you're not going to expect to take out a 10-pound turkey at the same time as a 15 or 20-pound turkey. That's one. And then two, the other factor would be the temperature that you cook it at. Now, in, like uh, any other meat, you want to do low and slow, but with this one, you um, chicken does not necessarily have to have that low and slow mentality here you can go 250 275 even up to 300 if you would like uh, the only thing is you just have to keep an eye on the temperature on the inside of your internal meat now why would you want to cook at a higher rate the reason you want to cook at a higher rate is because or a higher temp is because it'll give you that crisp uh, crusty kind of outside of your skin of whatever you're doing either turkey or chicken or whatever it is it's poultry okay so um, internet says between 30 to 45 minutes per pound this is a 10 to 11 pound turkey so if that's true I'm looking at smoking for about the next uh, four to five hours we'll see how, how uh, true that is I did just give it a 24 hour time stamp on it uh, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna use it for 24 hours uh, one of the main reasons that I like to use this type of temperature probe is because it, one the very first thing is it has six that I can uh, monitor and I have the very first one I know is going to be my breast on the inside and the next one is going to be my my uh, dark meat so as we were speaking as, as I was showing you some of the things of the video my cold smoker attachment has already started to work let me see if I can get you a good angle so you can see some of the smoke that's starting to come out okay so now at this point in the cook or at this point in the actual smoke itself all you have to do is monitor your temperatures and make sure that your chips uh, do not run out. All right? I will get back to you guys uh, when it's ready to pull out this turkey and then we're going to slice it up and see uh, how it came out. One other thing, uh, the chips that I used, I am using a mixture of chips and, let me bring this over here, I am using a mixture of chips, smoked chips and a little bit of the uh, pellets and I know it says on the thing hey don't use pellets but I, I find that it does uh, the pellets do last a little bit longer and they give a really good smoke okay so what's gonna happen right now is I have my poker right here this poker is gonna help me because after about an hour or two I'm gonna come out I'm gonna come out here and what I'm gonna notice is that the chips are still all the way to the top let me show you where I'm at right now these chips are all the way to the top right now um, that those chips might stay there because of the simple fact that as the uh, smoker as the chips are smoking from the bottom to the top it has a heating element down here sometimes the uh, chips get stuck because of this gooey residue I don't know if you can see someone right there that gets stuck on the chips and, and that makes them not go down so what I have to do uh, when that happens is actually shake this or use a poker to push down the chips and the pellets but for right now I'm just gonna give it a quick overview right here I'm gonna open it up it's only been let me see what it's been three minutes and you already see some of the smoke coming out all right so we'll see you guys when it's ready to be uh, taken out for the slicing okay so we're about uh, about an hour and a half into the cook if you look I have it at 250 it already hit 250 um, this has been going on for about an hour and a half 
And still, look at all the smoke that's coming out. This is why I love this um, cold smoker attachment. At this point, what I want to do is I want to make sure that the chips are going down the way they're supposed to. That, to me, tells me no. This is the reason that I have this poker or you change it. The problem is that because of the stickiness that's uh, under going on down here, it will not allow these uh, pellets. I actually added pellets, but it won't allow the pellets or the chips to go down. So, <coughs> it's a lot of smoke. Woo! So, what do you do? You either shake this or you stab this so that it goes all the way down. Now, once you notice that I do that, now all the chips have gone down. Now they've already settled down. And what you do at this point, knowing that you're going to do another couple of hours of smoking, is you just grab a little bit more of your chips. And you go ahead and you, you just add them into your hopper. Now, you can use the same, the regular method of using, using uh, smoking your chips through the actual um, master built smoker chip tray problem is that you're probably gonna have to be coming out every 20 30 minutes if it smokes for you every 20 or 30 minutes and uh, start adding these uh, the the chips in there and just kind of baby it a little bit longer the reason I like this cold smoker attachment is because you can actually <coughs> whoo, you, can, <laughs> you can actually leave it for about an hour an hour and a half and and it'll still be smoking for you but I've added about a good amount of chips there for, for it to refill that cavity. And uh, <coughs> 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 yeah, <coughs> that's a lot of smoke. <coughs> <coughs> there you go. So an hour and a half into it, remember we're looking at our, our uh, internal temperatures. We got to make sure we keep them at the right temperatures. It's uh, 165 for the breast and about 185 for the dark meat which is the leg so as long as you're in that range you should be okay right now we're at about a hundred so we're a little bit over halfway there and uh, I'm gonna take a quick a quick pit, peek inside to see what it looks like oh yeah it's starting to cook you can start to see that, that it's actually cooking right there and I'm using the chicken also as a, to baste a little bit of my thing, but all right, everything looks good so far. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna go in here and I'm gonna actually increase my temperature to 275. Now the reason I wanna increase to 275 is uh, for a couple of reasons. What that's gonna do is it's one, gonna speed up the cooking process, but the next thing it's gonna actually do, whether you're cooking uh, ten, uh, a chicken or turkey down here. The next thing is going to do is it's going to actually bark, get that bark on the um, on the outside of the actual crust. It'll give you a little bit of a crust. Now, the chicken on top, if you can see, has a little bit better uh, crust on it because there's nothing hitting it. The turkey on the bottom has been getting some juices from the chicken, so that's why the turkey is not as crusty as it should. But adding those extra 25 degrees, increasing it, should help out a little bit more with the bark. So at this point, again, I don't like to tell you this is how many minutes or how many, how many hours it's going to take per pound to cook. You really, really need to invest yourself in some uh, internal thermometers, internal meat thermometers that allow you to, to monitor it with your phone. Uh, if, you, if you're looking at this right here, right in front of you, what I like about this one here is that it actually gives you where the temperature has been going either increasing or decreasing and where you actually need it to be so if I'm doing the turkeys you're looking at turkey and turkey dark the reason that went down is because I lowered the I opened the I actually opened the I opened the door okay but if we're looking at here you're looking at the chicken is going up so that's what you want you want to be able to hit uh, 165 165 uh, so that you can uh, so it can be cooked uh, well done all right so just keep an eye on the temperature and uh, it'll come out once it hits to 165 on your breast on your turkey or your chicken breast or uh, one about 185 on your thighs all right so our turkey finally reached to temp it was 165 actually to be honest with you guys I uh, 
had to step out for a bit and when I came back it was already at 176 so we'll see it's all hey nothing is is gonna be perfect right so we'll see what happens so what I did after the turkey was uh, done I pulled it out and I put it on my ice chest I let it sit for about 10-15 minutes um, why is just something that I do I don't know if it'll add or take any away from the flavor but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna try to pull it out and there you go that's what a finished turkey looks like smoked brined and everything coming out of the smoker it smells good I like the bark you get this barky flavor now this barky look to it now if I had not raised the temperature I, I don't think I would have been able to achieve this bark but and now it's a moment of truth and I think the what people like to do is kind of show off the breast part so I guess that's what I'll do too this is this was a very small turkey it was about 11 to 10 uh, 10 to 11 pounder so uh, we'll see we'll see how juicy and how tender this comes out it's the first slice right there pretty that was pretty soft alright let me pull this back a little bit let me go to the next one I mean I'm not really putting really that much pressure on it and as you can see the steam is coming out of it but I mean there you go it's cooked through and through but looks are not everything right you need to see how good it tastes now we'll see how this tastes oh yeah that's good again if you see my other videos I've said this before I don't I'm not a big white meat type of person I'm more of a dark meat but this chicken this uh, turkey right here if you look at all the coloration uh, it is very tender just pulls apart and the white part or the white meat of the, of the turkey is really really tender alright so let's see if I can get the turkey leg here cut at the right angle let me get this the skin here and for those of you who are expert at, at this you're probably yelling at the you're yelling right now at the at, at your screen saying you're doing it wrong but I don't pretend to be an expert in cutting off turkey because it's something you do once a year but if I pull this hot there has to be some type of point here where it'll stop it'll snap wow this thing is still piping hot okay well that came off there you go that's a leg and something else. I want to see if it's anything like chicken. The cut off. Ah, there it is. There's my cut off. I knew there was. I knew it was somewhere there. So here's your turkey leg. Again, it's not going to be a, a humongous leg because this was a small uh, turkey. But let's dive into this. This is the part that I'm I'm interested in. This is the the turkey leg. Oh yeah. That's good. I hope. Oh man. That's good. Um. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I have other videos showing you guys how to go through smoking briskets, ribs, chicken, turkey. Yeah, pretty much. If you can smoke it, I pretty much are um, putting up videos for it. So. Uh, please like and subscribe, but this is a really good method. Just so you know, it did take about six hours six, uh, to be able to cook this 10 pound turkey, uh, 10 to 11 pound turkey. So keep that in mind. Um, you don't want to rush it, but at the same time, you don't want to prolong it as well. Uh, if you, uh, again, thank you for watching my channel and enjoy your turkey.